This video is going to cover how the APGAR score assesses the health of a newborn. I'll talk about exactly what the APGAR score is, where it came from, and the meaning of the test results. The term APGAR is a backronym. It came from Virginia APGAR, the inventor of this the, the person that devised this test. Now, she devised a specific test to assess the health of a newborn, and then about 10 years later, uh, the publication started coming out using her name as the acronym for the test uh, sequence. Virginia Apgar graduated from CUCPS around uh, in the 1930s. She's won several awards. She wanted to be a surgeon, but she was discouraged by Alan Whipple, uh, basically telling her, eh, it's a guy's world. Um, she was uh, basically a feminist, but she never joined any women's organization. She would be commonly be quoted as saying, women are free from the time they're born, or women are free from the womb, something like that. Uh, she became an anesthesiologist because... Uh, she basically was kicked out of the surgery club. Uh, pioneered work in obstetrics. Uh, she was an advocate for universal va vaccination of rubella when there was a pandemic in the 1960s. And the reason for that is uh, she studied teratogens. She was a, a leading researcher in teratogenic uh, things that would act on newborns. And rubella is one of those things. Uh, speaking of which, I was just informed today. I haven't looked to check on the news or whatever. But I was just informed today that rubella has been considered as uh, eradicated from the Americas, both North and South America. So all in part due to some of the work that Virginia Apgar did. If you want to know more about rubella, I made a video on the torch, uh, the torch infections that can cross the placenta. You can watch that one. So Virginia Apgar, she gave five things to check for, and you can either get a score of zero, one, or two on each of those things. And so you want to check activity, pulse, grimace, appearance, and respiration, all spelling Apgar. Quickly, I'll go over those things. So activity, you're looking for flexion. Can when the baby flexes, is it uh, will it flex against resistance? Uh, if it is, score is 2. If there's some flexion but it's not strong, then it's a score of 1. And then, of course, none is 0. Then the P pulse, you're looking for greater than 100 beats per minute, less than 100 beats, or absent. Grimace or, and reflex irritability, basically, if you poke the baby, spank the baby, does it cry? Does it cry on stimulation? And does it have some other reflexes you can check? For example, pulling away, coughing, and sneezing. If it just has a grimace on stimulation, but it doesn't cry, then the baby has a score of one, and then of course no response again is zero. Appearance, you're looking for cyanosis or paleness. So is the baby blue? If the baby's pink all over, that's a good healthy color. Most babies will get a score of nine at five minutes on this test because of appearance. It's almost universal that there will be blue at the extremities. And then if they're blue or pale all over, then that's a score of zero. Respiration, you're looking for strong crying. If the crying is weak or irregular gasping, then you get a score of one, and then absent breathing, of course, is zero. Now, you may have noticed that the highest score you can get is 10, so two times the five variables is 10, and like I said, most babies will get a score of nine due to color, and then, of course, zero is the lowest, and that would be a really bad score. So what's it all mean? What happens? The baby's born. One minute after delivery, you uh, do the APGAR screening, and then you do it again at five minutes regardless uh, of what the score is. It should either stay the same or go up. If it drops down, that can indicate pro possible problems. And then a score of six or lower indicates a need for immediate medical attention. So and that's especially true if it's lower at five minutes. It's important to, to realize, though, even though they need immediate medical attention, yeah, that is that is important to take care of. But because we have that immediate medical attention, the low APGAR score usually does not predict long-term health. So you have an APGAR score of 3. It doesn't mean your child's going to be sick for the rest of their life. It doesn't mean anything uh, necessarily is going to be bad. It just means that they need attention right now. Uh, on the other hand, if it remains persistently low, that is usually an indicator of some other problem. For example, like a neurological defect or, or a Chiari malformation or something like that, preventing them from breathing, keeping them cyanotic, those kind of things. 
And what you do, if it's persistently low at five minutes, you keep doing the test every five minutes uh, during the treatment, during whatever type of uh, care that you're providing. You keep doing that test every five minutes and you monitor it long term. And then those long term assessments can be key predictors of long term outcome.